What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down who I think is going to be the next Hunter Renfro coming into the NFL draft this year, Kyle Phillips out of UCLA. So this guy, if you're a young wide receiver and you're trying to learn about route running, you're trying to learn how routes should be run, how you can be more explosive with your movements, this is a guy that you want to study, okay? So we're going to be breaking down three routes from him today. We're going to be talking about how you guys can run a speed out, a 10-yard out versus an inside shade kind of catch technique coverage. We're going to be talking about how to run a corner versus outside leverage and how Kyle Phillips does that and is able to finish the play. And then we're going to be talking about how to run a quick slant on the goal line versus this kind of head up off coverage. Okay. So three examples that can really teach you guys a lot. Let's get started with this video. I hope it helps you guys out. So first rider, it's going to be that 10 yard speed out. Like I said, now this is a textbook route, right? Able to restack, able to break off a of one foot at the top of the route. And that is not an easy thing to do. Okay. So now anytime we know Phillips does such a great job here, anytime that we know we have an inside shade guy, right? What's his whole goal? His goal is to force me to that sideline. So as a wide receiver, my number one thing is that I want to get him to keep his leverage because I want to be able to just get right back onto my line and be able to break to the 10 yard out and give my quarterback plenty of space to be able to lead me. Anytime that it's an outside breaking route, we do not want to just run away from this guy or just try to run up into the depth because what he's going to do is get hands on me, be it right into my hips, squeeze me to the sideline and that quarterback's not going to have any room and this guy could undercut the out route angle, pick it off and take it six points the other way. So that comes down to my route and how I actually structure this thing. So what he does a great job of and this is textbook, coming at him, being a little bit patient, giving him that move to the inside I'd just get that DB to stop his feet. If I could just get him to stop his feet, I freeze him, I throw that hard cut to the inside, that can certainly stop him. Now, another thing that you could do, you don't necessarily have to attack tempo out here. You could square him up a little bit. You could try to attack the inside shoulder, maybe get him to weave to the inside a little bit, but anything to give you space to the outside, and that will allow you to get back on your line so you can break this thing off with space like we were saying. So he does a great job of coming up at and making that break, and now when he pushes back vertical, you see how he stays on that tight restack angle. He doesn't start to drift up field. He doesn't start to drift to the outbreak with this pad level. Everything about this on the stem portion of the route is saying that it is a fate. That's the key. Like every single route that you guys run against man coverage, your body language, your speed, and your stride are super important. Now, it's much easier said than done, right? Because a lot of people can get to this point, but they're not able to cut off of one step going at this point, right? They're able to run full speed, but then they end up slowing down right before the break point. They'll take a couple steps at the top of the break rather than cutting off of one foot. But the reason why Phillips is so talented is because of how sudden and how explosive of his movements he is, right? That's why I think he's going to see a lot a lot of success down the line because he's able to move like this, and this is what it takes to make separation or get separation against some of these top-tier DBs. And you being able to make that cut right and stride like that, it comes down to a lot of leg strength, a lot of ankle stability, a lot of knee stability, but also the mechanics of the cut is being sudden. I'm trying to be as explosive as I can with that cut. I want to hear that foot hit the ground because that's what's going to allow me to make that tight change of direction and not give that DB time to react on this thing by drifting off of the route. So that is as textbook as it gets for that 10-yard speed out. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job attacking leverage, keeping him to the inside, selling fade, and then breaking this thing off suddenly to get some separation. So great job with the vertical set or the vertical stem, I should say, and breaking it off right in the stride. That's what you need every single time as a wide receiver, fellas. You've got to sell fade. You've got to create energy at the top, and we have to be able to accelerate. Now, fellas, we're going to talk about how you can run a corner route versus an outside shade, kind of like catch technique coverage, DB, maybe where we got two yards of separation. How would you guys run a corner route? And this is a goal line situation, okay, where we're in the red zone, all right? So before I think, play this thing full speed, I want to talk to you guys about a great opportunity we have on our website. We are offering a 28 eight day on field wide receiver workout plan. So if you guys would like all the on field wide receiver drills that you need to do for route running, press releases, catching, explosiveness, ankle stability, knee stability, the ability to help you guys cut while running full speed, like we previously mentioned in this video, check out that very first link below. Everything's broken down into a four week daily schedule for you with sets, repetitions, and we give you rest periods in an instructional video explaining each drill, breaking down the importance of it and showing a full speed example. So if you guys want some more information on our four week long on field wide receiver workout schedule. Check out that very first link below. We'd love to get you on that. Let's get back to this video. So now we got this corner route here against outside shade, right? Outside shade, but it's more like press. It's not off man coverage. It's like press coverage or catch technique coverage, however you want to think of it, right? But if this DB is outside shade and we have to run an outside breaking route, Phillips displays great football IQ, right? And Phillips is not necessarily the biggest guy in the world, right? So if you're maybe a shorter receiver, you're not the, and I think he's extremely fast and extremely explosive. But for example, if you're maybe not the fastest 
oldest or most explosive guy. Like you look at Cooper Cup. He ran a 4640 coming out of the draft. And again, for the NFL, that's not the fastest, right? Like for, for high school, that's that's moving pretty good. But for the NFL, that's 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 not that's just average speed, right? In the NFL, you got DBs going up against every single play who are running four threes, four fours. So how you get open is by knowing your route running and knowing knowing the IQ behind each route and what a DB is trying to accomplish and how you can structure your routes like so, right? And so that's what Phillips displays, and that's why I think he's gonna see a lot of success. So in this case, outside Shade DB, he's trying to force me to the inside. He's expecting an outside breaking route, probably because this is an outside receiver who cut his split down. So anytime that a receiver cuts his split down, this DB is expecting him to run to the outside, right? So it's watch thing full speed. So he does a great job giving him that outside move, getting back over, restacking. And now the DB is in a great position to make a play. This is a lot of the times what we're going to see when they're just in the right kind of leverage for the right kind of route. But we have to finish the play. That's what all guys who are maybe not the most highly recruited have to do, who maybe don't have the most exposure, who maybe aren't the biggest guys, you have to be able to finish the play, and that's what's going to make you stand out as a wide receiver, right? So Phillips does exactly that. And again, there's not much he can do in terms of this route to sell this thing. What I think maybe he could have done a little bit better is try to maybe restack a little bit more, but ultimately, this is a high football IQ route right here because he was able to keep timing with the quarterback. What usually happens when it's man coverage? When it's man coverage, that quarterback is usually probably getting some kind of pressure, right? So if the DB's outside shade, that chances are that means that there's probably a safety. He's got safety help, right? He's okay with him just running a post because that's going to go right into his help. If he gets right into his hip, that's fine. So as a receiver, when I get this kind of look, but it's man, and maybe there's one high safety, but I look inside the box, maybe the quarterback's getting a lot of pressure. I can't take forever. I can't be doing all these fancy moves to try to get this DB to completely bail outside, restack, get a ton of separation, because the quarterback will be sacked. He does not have all day. If we only have six guys blocking five linemen or running back, and they bring six defenders, that's man-on-man -man protection right there. And if one guy gets beat, the quarterback is sacked. So he does not have all day, because those linemen, no linemen, can hold that block for 10 seconds, right? So as a receiver, I have to get up in this out quick and I have to keep timing with my quarterback. So that's what Phillips does. He goes with this quick double up release to the outside, attacks the DB's leverage outside to kind of freeze him so he could take the free inside release. And when we could take the inside release and that DB's not able to get hands, screw up the timing, if I could restack, give him a move at the top, I can create some separation or at least put myself with some space to where the quarterback can actually lead me to the outside. That's the number one thing. Like we talked about on that speed out that he ran. He gave his quarterback plenty of space to lead him on the out route. Now on this corner route, he gave that quarterback plenty of space to at least give him a chance on the throw and put that ball in a good spot. Again, it's a quarterback for He's a very quarterback friendly wide receiver, a lot like Cooper Cup, a lot like Hunter Renfro, those guys who could get open and know where to be for their specific quarterback. Let's watch the thing again, full speed one more time. I think this is a good route. Again, sometimes that DB is just going to be in the right spot at the right time. I still have to focus on finishing the play as a wide receiver. Let's watch it again. Great job hitting him with that double up, working to restack, hitting that double move at the top. And again, just a step of separation is plenty Plenty for that quarterback to drop it in if he has that arm talent. Okay, so last route we're going to be talking about here is a quick slant route on the goal line. Okay, so now I want to talk to you again about the route IQ of Phillips and just how he's able to structure this route and why it's able to work, right? So we have a situation. Now, this is a quick game slant. So what I mean by that is the quarterback is just catching the snap. Watch the quarterback right here. Quarterback's just catching the snap, planning off the back leg and letting it go. So this is not like an RPO where he's doing a zone read fake. This is not where he's taking a three-step drop or maybe doing a rollout. So as a wide receiver, what does that mean to us? Us. That means that we have to be fast with whatever I'm deciding to do off the line. Now, so many wide receivers, they try to get too creative with this slant route. They'll square up the DB. They'll take three steps to the outside. That'll get him to jump. And great. And that's fine. And that release is cool to use. But when it's a quick game slant, that quarterback does not have all day based on the timing of the play. So we have to keep timing with my quarterback. So what I would do here, rather than attacking the outside shoulder and outside hip of the DB to get him to flip on the fade and then slip back underneath, I would just square him up and I want to give him that crossover move so I can just get there right now. So let's watch the thing full speed. So that's exactly what he does. Crosses him up, gets that separation, and that ball is out right there. As soon as he gets off that break, that's how quick the quarterback is going to let that thing go in this situation. So I have to be to the spot. I have to be to the window that the quarterback needs me to get to. Because think about this. You're also going to probably have like a middle backer in the middle of the field. And if that quarterback is staring to the left side and you're taking for forever, what's that mic going to do? That mic's going to drift over here and get right to that throwing window. So to save your own life, let's 
be quick with the release and let's get out of there. So now, why does this release work? Anytime that we are in press coverage, right? What's a DB supposed to be looking at? He's supposed to be watching my hips. So anytime that I'm doing a double move, any kind of wide step outside of frame of a DB, I got to make sure I'm selling with that upper half. You see how much his hips, how much his shoulders turn. That's what gets the DB to jump. That's what gets him to commit to the fade because everything about this step looks like a fade. Now, what gives him that explosion he's able to get back to the inside on this is look where he's striking with his feet. That toe is pointed forward. The weight's distributed on the inside part of his foot. That's the explosive spot to where we could drive. This is a textbook position. You want your upper half to look like this, lower half to have the toes forward, weight on the arch so I could get some separation, but also be able to push off of that outside foot to get some explosion back to the inside and widen the distance from the DB. Now, that's something you can't think about during a game. That's something that's built through practice, that's built through repetition, but turning that whole upper body will get the DB to move, keeping that toe forward and pushing off that arch is what will get you that explosion and make that efficient cut for you. Textbook route here from Kyle Phillips. Just watch the thing again, full speed one more time. Great job squaring up, hitting the one-two, and then getting separation on that slant. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Always appreciate the feedback from you guys. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like a four-week-long on-field wide receiver workout schedule, everything wide receivers need to do on the field for route running, press releases, all the above with sets, repetitions, and an instructional video explaining each drill. Check out that very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.